XM, and I'm talking about the chart of Tom Petty. He's a great American singer-songwriter who recently passed away. So we're going to be looking at his chart and the remarkable life that he lived. So recently Tom Petty passed away and he was a great singer-songwriter um, from the United States. He was born in Gainesville, Florida and he came onto the scene in the late 70s, mid-late 70s, um, mainly the late 70s and had a sustained career for decades. And so uh, he was a remarkable talent but also remarkably successful in his work. And so, of course, that's a great case study um, for us um, astrologically. Now, we don't have an exact birth time for Tom Petty, but I've been, you know, I, I've just been looking at it a little bit, and I've sort of just put a Taurus ascendant. This is by no means a full rectification, but I've used a Taurus ascendant. Here's a quick kind of um, justification, a little bit, for why I've used Taurus as far as Dasha's. If, you, if we have a Taurus ascendant, we see that he would have just gone into Ketu Dasha in August. Um, and we also see that uh, Jupiter Mars would have been when his success began. And then shortly thereafter in the early 80s, sustained decades of success in the Saturn and then the Mercury Dashas. And so often when you see people who have these kinds of this remarkable success, you will see things like, you know, amazing, powerful um, yogas and uh, things that would indicate it. And so with Tom Petty, um, as we look at his chart, let's say if it were a Taurus Ascendant, we don't have to keep going back to that. Um, I'm going to talk about planets and signs mainly, but if we were to use a Taurus Ascendant, we would see that that Saturn and Mercury Dasha would be extremely powerful for giving success. First of all, Saturn rules a moon Jupiter in his 10th house from Taurus, and of course, Mercury rules all of that. He's got exalted Mercury in his natal chart. So that Saturn is ruled by an exalted Mercury. Venus, his ruling planet, is also forming a Raja Yoga there with Mercury. As you see, Venus Mercury there um, forming a Raja Yoga with his ruling planet. Saturn is also powerful. And again, all this in the fifth house of creativity really makes a lot of sense. Again, we don't have a birth time. A lot of times could work. In fact, even... Virgo could work as far as the life is concerned. Um, even I was looking at Capricorn. So anyway, there's a there's a very interesting case to be made for a Capricorn rise. I'm sorry for a Taurus rising. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to be talking about just the planets and signs here, and that we can get a lot and understand a lot about his life, even just looking at the planets and signs. So as we see this Saturn you know, um, Saturn, K2, Mercury, Venus in Virgo really gives him a kind of, maybe not conservative, but sort of structured, methodical, practical um, approach to things. And of course, a lot of creativity and a lot of skill and a lot of thoroughness and attention to detail, as is the case of Virgo. And something else that he really shows is that kind of cynical, sarcastic you know virgo has this edge um of recognizing hypocrisy and that kind of thing he had that sort of energy very earthy kind of person so you see all this earth as well again it's, it's another reason why i really favored taurus or capricorn or virgo but um you see that very powerful sign of virgo saturn mercury k2 venus all in virgo then he has sun in his 10th house in uh, Libra. Of course, that's a debilitated sun. And that's in the 6th house of Libra. He was running up against authority his whole life. He's pretty well known for suing his record companies and taking on um, sort of litigation with power. He also had a difficult relationship with his father. He was mistreated by his father when he was growing up. We could see some of that kind of masculine issues with authority and things like that. But we also see a strong Mars in Scorpio. So even though he might have had issues with his own sort of like masculinity and even a difficult father on one level, um, 
as shown by the weak sun, he's got a very powerful Mars in Scorpio, so he definitely had a lot of courage. Courage to take on record companies, courage to take on battles. He was known to have a pretty notorious temper, particularly, um, you know, in his band. They had a lot of fights and arguments. Not as bad as others, but definitely he would, you know, he was pretty intense. But he also really got along with people very well overall in his life. His band, the Heartbreakers, were together for 30 years or so. So you can't have, you know, that kind of sustained relationship with people and not be a good guy. So, again, even though he had that intense Mars um, in Scorpio, which would show a kind of, you know, passion, he also was very liked, likable. And you can even see this by his career when he um, wound up doing projects with... Um, Bob Dylan, his band, the Heartbreakers, actually backed up Bob Dylan. He became great friends with Dylan. And Bob Dylan is not exactly Mr. Congenial, um, but got along well with Tom Petty. Uh, Tom Petty also did a lot of work with other artists like Stevie Nicks. Um, uh, and one of the most iconic, probably, groups ever in history, the Traveling Wilburys, where it was Tom Petty, George Harrison, Roy Orbison, Jeff Lynne, and I think Bob Dylan was also in that, but this um, iconic group of singer-songwriters got together, um, and I think Tom Petty was instrumental in putting that together, I think because of him and, I think it was him and Dylan, and then, or no, it was Jeff Lynn of the ELO was making a record and asked someone to help out. I don't remember the whole story, but anyway, it just shows that he was very congenial and very well liked even though he had an intense side as seen by that Mars in Scorpio of course I haven't even mentioned the moon Jupiter in Aquarius very powerful and very close together let me bring up his chart we could see just look at his chart a little more without the split screen you can see moon Jupiter in Taurus I'm sorry moon Jupiter in Aquarius very close together um, really shows now, you know, of course, this is what the Taurus ascendant. If he was born earlier, they wouldn't be as close. But anyway, still, Moon Jupiter in Aquarius really shows that sense of, you know, wanting to inspire. And it's also, you know, Jupiter is kind of the creative channel in a lot of ways. So is Rahu and Ketu. But Jupiter is also just that source of inspiration. And it shows where a person can become an inspiration and an inspiring figure. Um, so again, we see this very clearly with him um, as someone who was, you know, very, you know, very popular for a long time. Um, it's hard to find people who says, ah, I hate Tom Petty. Tom Petty sucks. Most people at least like a couple Tom Petty songs. It's, it's hard not to. They were just really well-written songs. And again, you know, they really come from a place, myself as a singer-songwriter and as someone who's been involved in music for a long time, one of the things that's really unique about Tom Petty is even though he came from the era of, you know, you might say rock stars or rock and rollers or fashion, glam, literally like right when all of that was beginning or um, and as it became just sort of the norm throughout the 80s and MTV, he always stayed pretty real. Even though he embraced videos and all of that, all of the trappings of celebrity, and he became a celebrity himself. He still would go back and record with his band, The Heartbreakers. He took a hiatus from The Heartbreakers for several years when he pursued a solo career, but it wasn't his... His image was not the important thing. It was always the music, and you can see that very clearly with Tom Petty. Um, you know, again, because he came in the late 70s, and... At that time, you know, during the late 70s, there was all of the punk and new wave and all of that is right when he came out. And at first, you know, the record companies sort of positioned him thinking he might be a sort of new wave artist. In the, like, 76, 77 is when his first album came out with Breakdown. Um, and then Refugee. I mean, I remember these things clearly. I was a teenager, so Tom Petty was... <laughs> he was right there. And it's funny because at the time, I really liked a lot more hard rock. You know, Led Zeppelin and Rush and Deep Purple and 
you know, all of those heavy rock bands. And Tom Petty was not of that, but I liked Tom Petty. Like, everybody liked Tom Petty. There was something that was transcendent. Some of it was just, you know, he had a very sensible songwriting approach. It was very, it really wasn't blues. It was more Americana or more like the Beatles or like the Birds. Like 60s um, folk, it was like electric folk. And I think it's one of the reasons why Bob Dylan liked him. And he also, he took the the approach of like a 60s folk rock or folk music songwriter and brought in a kind of ensemble um, band and kept it very real, very roots, you know, um, like, he had, you know, he had piano and, and uh, you know, keyboard and, of course, you know, the electric guitars. But, for instance, one of the things that was interesting about his songs is there were very, it was very sparse and in relationship to long guitar solos or long experimental musical passages the uh, the songwriting approach was very much like a kind of hit singles music pop sensibility so when you say pop you mean you know when i say pop i mean in that kind of album oriented rock format or that sort of pop format 3 4 minute songs tight you know, grouped around that structure, which is really what the Beatles made popular. But he had this edge that was so unique, and I think it really comes from that, from that Taurus, I'm sorry, from that Virgo, Mercury, Saturn, K2 kind of cynicism. This is a quality, and also the Mars and Scorpio. But even his voice, it's like, you know, it's all right if you love me. It's all right if you don't. You know, it's like this sneer. I'm not afraid of you running away, honey. I'll get the feeling you won't. You know, and he's like... Like in Refugee, there's a real sneer. We got something we both know and we don't talk too much about it. You know? It don't really matter to me, baby. Everybody's had to fight to be free. You know, it's like, rah. It's got the, it had this edge that you just, you just liked. It was muscular. It was strong. But it was really a kind of uh, real sort of pop sensibility to it. It wasn't heavy rock, which is what I really liked when I was a kid. But I, I love that album um, called Damn the Torpedoes. You know, it's like that. It always had that kind of sneer to it. Um, it had Refugee. And, um, somewhere, somehow, somebody must have kicked you around some, you know? Who knows, maybe you were kidnapped, tied up, taken away, and held for ransom. Baby, it don't really matter to me, baby, you know? You believe what you want to believe. It's like sneering, <laughs> you know? You kind of, it was so unique. Like, like so many artists were back then. They were all unique, so... I'm not going to get into how the 70s and 80s were so great. Especially the mid-late 70s. Every artist was so good. Because you had to be good to make it. But that was his thing. That was his unique sound. So it was this kind of pop. It, they were really pop songs. Like when you play the songs um, on a guitar or whatever. They're very um, simple chord structures. Well, well organized. But then it, there was a blues feel to it especially with the keyboards that would come in and a heavy rock sound with the heavy guitars. And then his voice, which is kind of like Bob Dylan sneer and rock singing. You know, so he took, you know, because Bob Dylan was always just like, you know, he, he sort of had that twang but and, and a kind of sneer. But, well, didn't you, you know. How does it feel? Uh, and Bob and you know Tom Petty took it to the next level. Somewhere, somehow, he's just like, nah. <laughs> little musical impressions today. No, but um, really, really good, good songwriter, good musician. Everybody liked Tom Petty. Um, now here's the side by side chart of the night Tom Petty died. Now you can see, regardless, Tom Petty has this Kalasarpa Yoga in his natal chart. And again, you know, 
whether people know it or not, you know, I, I really do consider the Kalasarpa Yoga to be important. And I've heard, you know, it's not in any text and whatnot. It's true, but when you look at something, or actually, I, I do believe it's referred to in might be Pal it might be Paladipika, but when you see something that has an effect, you look at it, and you can see the night Tom Petty died. This was also the night of that horrific shooting in Las Vegas. And you can see that there we had the Kala Sarpa Yoga in the sky, and the moon had just broken out of the Kala Sarpa Yoga. And so Tom Petty was born with the Kala Sarpa Yoga, all the planets in between Rahu and Ketu. And you could see on the night he died, if, if you look at the transits and his chart, Saturn was very close to his natal Mars, so Saturn had just gone over his natal Mars. It actually gone over his natal Mars the previous year, and then Saturn went back to about 27 and stationed on his natal Mars very close to it for months. And again, if, if, we're, if we're looking at a Taurus Ascendant, that's in the seventh house, which is the death house. It's the descendant, the house of death. The other thing about that transit, that day Jupiter was right on his natal sun. And if we're looking at a Taurus Ascendant, Jupiter is the eighth lord. And by the way, these things absolutely work. Once you find an ascendant, every planet, as it transits the chart, is that functional, has that functional status. So for a Taurus person, Jupiter transits, it's the 8th and the 11th house lord transiting. It's not just, oh, but it's Jupiter, it's the guru, it's great. It's still Jupiter, it's guru, it's great. But for Taurus, it's the 8th and 11th house ruler as well. And so for Tom Petty, Jupiter going over his sun is the eighth lord going over the sun. It's kind of akin to Saturn because Saturn has a quality of the eighth house. So again, you see this very close. Jupiter had just gone over his natal sun. It was within a degree. So this is the most urgent transit, especially outer planet transit, is Jupiter going over his natal sun. And again, if we have Taurus ascendant, that's the eighth lord going over the sun. Of course, the sun is your vitality. We also have other transits. You know, Mercury and the sun are both um, in uh, Virgo, close to their natal positions. And, of course, the moon had just gone into the same sign as his moon and it was going over his natal Jupiter, which is retrograde. And so... Um, you know, the other thing is that Ketu had just gone over his that moon Jupiter in his natal chart. So Ketu had just gone over. So, you know, we don't really know, at least I don't really know, whether he'd been sick or whatever. I, I Maybe I could look into that, report back. But Ketu had just gone over his natal Jupiter in the 10th. I, I do know that he had done some concerts lately, um, not that long ago. I think he did a concert even like just a week before. So... This is um, what you notice, but especially w on the transits, what I notice is, is the Saturn and Jupiter, Jupiter going over his natal sun. And again, we don't know if it's Taurus. So if it is Taurus, though, it's the eighth Lord going over his sun in the sixth house, which again, that's, that's, that's a difficult transit, even, even potentially dangerous. Saturn would be going over his Mars regardless. So these are these are universal. But when you bring in the house factors, if it's in the seventh house, if that Saturn is going through the seventh house, that's a death house. That's a Marika house. And the other Marika house, at least one of them, is the third because it's the eighth from the eighth, and Rahu would have just set up in that third house. But again, I don't want to be reaching too much, making the case for the Taurus ascended, but it does t tend to make sense, especially when you look at What, what could be his dashas. Look, he just went into K2 dasha a couple months ago. And that's pretty significant. You look for a big shift to show something like a big shift this way. And by the way, also even this, when you look at when, you know, Jupiter Mars is when his success begins in this timing, but then Saturn, look, this is when his sustained, like 1981, this was when he started having big hits. Daniel Torpedoes was big, but then the hard promises and then doing um, when he became a true like global rock star
doing duets with Stevie Nicks and being all over the place with his album um, that had um, the waiting is the hardest part and then all of that. His real sustained success and consistency, you know, started around this 80, 81 time and then forward through that. So um, there's, there's certainly a case to be made for that. But either way, even just the fact of Moon Jupiter in the 10th, we see Moon in the 10th definitely for people who are famous or, you know, and also Jupiter as being, you know, teachers and guides, inspiring figures. So again, even if it's not the 10th, just Moon, Jupiter, and Aquarius, very much interested in maybe not necessarily larger cultural themes, but certainly um, had a sense of altruism and justice, especially for, you know, taking on even some sort of difficult issues like he took his um, record company to court um, over a over a bad record deal which was not necessarily a social cause but he also did it as a way to pave the way for other artists and musicians he also um, really got on his record company for overcharging for albums this was back in the early 80s um, and he might have been involved in other causes that I don't really know about, but certainly, um, you know, any any relationship to Aquarius shows, you know, a, a sense of doing something in the public or for the public um, and in a public way. So we definitely can see that um, with him. If we look at this Mars and Scorpio, again, a lot of courage to really put himself out there and you can feel that sort of even maybe not violent stuff in his music but definitely an aggressive edge like I said the, the song Refugee for example you know it's like it's kind of a love song it's alright if you love me it's alright if you no that's breakdown it's um you know it's it's basically a kind of love song hey it's so you, you know he's saying you, you don't have to live like a refugee you know and but you know but it's like baby we ain't the first I know a lot of others had to stand the hurt it's basically like kind of a, kind of a love song saying come on it's okay you know you don't have to live like a refugee you know but his way of saying it refugee as like a love song it's kind of like you know who knows maybe you were kidnapped tied up taken away and held for ransom you know, that's a pretty um, severe thing to say in a kind of a baby it don't matter to me everybody's had to fight to be free you don't have to live like a refugee and then he's like so let's be together <laughs> let's have a romance <laughs> you know of course I also didn't really even mention this aspect from Saturn onto Mars because it's a pretty wide aspect but Saturn is casting this third house aspect onto Mars which also can give that sort of severe nature but you can see you know again that powerful Scorpio that powerful Mars and Scorpio is going to express himself regardless and, and you see it in that kind of intense you know language and and um energy but you know it he's he was also married a few times i don't remember how many um but uh you know in the seventh house he'll have um actually just look in here real quick how many times he was married and um Oh, and the, I'm also looking at a few things here. Drove him to a secret heroin addiction. Hidden trauma. Tom Petty's dark childhood and marriage breakdown drove him to a secret heroin addiction. I didn't know about that. So, I knew that he, um, had, you know, obviously, uh, a couple marriages. So, um, that looks like there were two Dana York and Jane Benio so um, often when you see uh, Mars in the seventh you'll have a couple marriages um, and things like that so his uh, you know whether it's in the seventh or not we can see that powerful Mars and Scorpio but definitely um, his Marriages could be shown by that. Just looking at a couple of things here. 
married Jane Benio, disclosed Stevie Nicks and met Penny, age of 17. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, The Edge of 17 by Stevie Nicks was written about, may have been written about Tom Petty. Benio had two daughters. Yeah. May 1987, an arsonist set fire to Tom Petty's house. Yeah, I remember that, too. Arsonist set fire to his house. He, his house burned down. He could have been killed, but he wasn't. This was in May 1987. And um, May 1987, I have the chart here. I'm, I can't share the full chart here. But um, yeah, May 1987, that would have been Saturn Ketu Dasha. Well, May 1987, Saturn Ketu, and here with this Taurus chart, he died in K2. But, so, early morning of Monday, October 2nd. Yeah, that's when he died, the early morning of Monday, October 2nd. So, fascinating, um, you know, uh, case study where this great artist um, who, who gave us so much. Um, you, you can really see, if nothing else, all of the creative skill, power, precision, longevity, commitment, duty of the, all these planets in Virgo. This is really the virtuous quality of Virgo. It's very methodical and detailed. And he's very detailed in his songwriting and very methodical about how he put things together um, you know he's known as having written great lyrics um, at least that that evoke what he wants to say the way he wants to say them and that attitude and that sort of mixture and that sense of service and humility this is one thing that I need to say as well is if you watch interviews with Tom Petty he's very humble very humble he, he doesn't you know, there's a great interview that I saw a few years ago that was done by a man named John Gomeshi um, on what's called the Q Network. It's a, it's a Canadian radio show. Fantastic interview. You, Tom Petty's just, he's such a normal, like, every man. He's not seeking celebrity, but he had songs that, for decades, that are iconic, that will always be remembered. He's revered as a, just one of the best American singer-songwriters ever. And, you know, even John Gomeshi asked him things like, so, you know, do you feel kind of strange that you're not mentioned in the same breath as people like, you know, Bob Dylan and, you know, Paul Simon or other great singer-songwriters? And he's just like, I don't think about that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just barely, you know, keeping it going. I, I'm just trying to do my best and, you know, Bob Dylan. I mean, I'm no Bob Dylan or whatever, but just kind of very, and it's obvious, you know, talking about things, you know, he, he's just very honest and simple, simple person. Simple in the sense of like, you know, he's like, I just, you know, I just like getting together with guys and playing music, you know. I I like just, I don't, I don't want to be anything more. You know, one of the reasons why I kept going back to the Heartbreakers even after I was well known is because I like walking in the room and not feeling like, you know, I'm the special one or I'm the important one. You know, when we get together to make music, you know, I bring in the songs and I'm still hoping these guys like it. You know, these are these are my guys I've known for 30 years, you know, and, you know, I bring in a song and I play it for them and, you know, I'm waiting to see if they like it, you know, and if they don't, they're honest with me. But, you know, this is the reason I like, you know, being in this band with these guys is because I'm just I'm just another one. I mean, people know Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and, you know, it was my band, but that's not the way we operate. We're not looking at it like that. When we get around each other, we're all equals. You know, he doesn't say it like that, but that's essentially what it is. And it's like, you know, I just like getting together and knowing that I can go somewhere and plug in my app and and play, you know, with these guys, whether there's a big crowd watching it or not, you know, we have as much of a good time as anything as whether there's nobody there or whether there's a lot of people there. But of course you like having a lot of people there who enjoy it with you, but the reason you make it in a band and you stay with people that long isn't because everybody's telling you how great you are, it's because you like doing it. 
And that's always been the most important thing. So anyway, just very humble and real, like just real. And it's the wisdom. That's the wisdom of Mercury, Saturn. Just enjoying it, enjoying the moment, enjoying the commitment to the art, staying humble and real about what it really is, not getting sucked up into some kind of ego trip. And looking at, and, and you can see this here, especially like with that debilitated sun, it, it really has a, a potential for this kind of humility, especially if you find another way to resurrect your identity, which he certainly did. But it will often, you'll see, debilitated sun will bring a lot of humility. Not always. And, you know, if, if other things, if there's no way to feel good about yourself, then the debilitated sun can just bring a lot of just feeling humiliated. And again, but that sort of dignified humility can really be shown by the sun humbled. Um, but it also can show a lack of focus, a lack of direction, which can lead to things like heroin addictions at times and stuff. Kalasarpa yogas also can. So I haven't looked into everything in his whole life there, but, um, you know, his, uh, you know, in general, um, he's someone who has lived a pretty amazing life. Um, yeah, Traveling Wilburys was George Harrison. It was George Harrison's group, which included Bob Dylan, Roy Orbison, and Jeff Lynne. Jeff Lynne was, was from Electric Light Orchestra. What a group. But, you know, you can't have great success with all these other people. I mean, imagine being in a group with Roy Orbison, Bob Dylan, George Harrison, and Jeff Lynne. I mean, this is... You don't do that because you're just a good musician. You do that because these are your buddies. So those are his buddies. So, of course, someone like that is going to be a nice guy, a likable guy, if not a lovable guy. Hard to find anyone who says they don't like Tom Petty. I don't, I don't even just mean his music, but he was, he was respected and adored, you would say. <laughs> Get a little choked up. <laughs> I just, just got a little choked up there for a second. I definitely have memories of Tom Petty. So... May his soul rest in peace.